Right, so welcome back to my F124 driver career mode where I drive as I at in Senna. Now, last episode, uh, Japan, it was quite good. To be honest, I never thought I would be able to breach that top five, top three area, but I not only managed to qualify a brilliant second after finding eight tenths of a second on my final qualifying lap, but I then went on to finish on the podium because, to be honest, Max Verstappen and George Russell, they were just gone. Like, they were different that race. They were out of there. They weren't, like, they, 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 they were gone. Do you know what I mean? They were out of there. But anyway, today we are going to Imola. Um, not gonna lie, probably one of my weakest tracks on the entire calendar, so I'm sure we're in for a good laugh. Let's get to the track and tackle some quality. Right, so here we go for qualifying lap number one. And uh, let's just say I'm not feeling overly confident, but we'll give it my all anyway. And here we go. I'm gonna instantly use a lot of my overtake because there's only like two straights on this entire track, so why not? Now into these first corners, you can use a lot more curb on this year's F1 game, as you can see. A little bit on the grass, that's all right, we move. As always, this first lap is just a bit of a learning process. Next set of corners, right, swing her in. Not bad. Sector one, I'm already half a second up on Magnussen. That is excellent news. Now through the fast left. Okay, never mind, I went off, we move. Now, Aquaminolari, I can't pronounce it. I don't even think that's the game of that corner. I could be wrong, but I think that's what that uh, corner's named. I can't pronounce it anyway. Now the chicane, where Perez went off in practice. Down the back straight, haven't got much ERS left. I should have saved a bit more, to be honest. Breaking a bit early, you kind of have to round there. Decent exit, on the curb, decent exit. ERS on. Bosch across the line, and it's going to be an instantaneous P8, which ain't bad, really. We're right in the mixture. Uh, it's nearly just, just under two temps away from my teammate, Lando Norris, who is actually, for once, having a decent quality, it looks like. I believe so far he's qualified P19 and, like, P9. So, you know, P6 already. Go on, lad. So right now, I'm currently half a second off pole, which is slightly concerning, because... I genuinely don't think there was a lot more in that lap. Uh, we only have, like I said, just under two temps away from my teammate, Arno Norris. I'd say the target is a top five. Um, I feel like a top three is doable with an absolute pixel-perfect lap, as you can see, fastest sector one. Uh, actually, if I've got the fastest sector one, should I up increase my downforce a little bit? I think I should do that. That means that they're going a lot quicker in the corners. Let's just up my downforce by five. We'll rock with that. I think we're ready to go. Let's give it everything. Give it the beans. And aim for a top five. And this is it. Here we go. Right. Now, I'm going to continue to use my overtake like I did on my first lap. However, I'm going to use a little bit less. And I'm not going to use any until the back straight. So, let's go down to 45. There we go. And here we go. Through the first couple of corners. Now, it's key that I avoid the grass. I've avoided the grass and instantly found half a 10. Now, I might lose a little bit because I was using overtake. That was pretty good. Break a little bit earlier. Get to the inside. Throttle as early as possible. Not bad. We have found a 10 so far, which ain't really good. I need to find a bit more. Through the fast left-hander. Get on throttle nice and early. That was very good. A little bit more time gained. Very strong through that corner. I, I'm not going to bother trying to pronounce the name again. Three temps up. I need to go big through the chicane. Oh, and I have done. Oh, I have done. We are six temps up currently. And now I can use some overtake. Down the back straight. Break a bit early. Ride the inside curb. Get on throttle early. No, I've gone off. Oh, I've gone wide. Okay, it's fine. I actually still gain time. ERS on. That could be a pole position. Go on. Way! I do it every single time, without doubt, every single time I put in a clutch final lap and I always get a higher position than I think I should get. I target a top five, we go and get a pole position by just under two tenths of a second over Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. Wow. Lando Norris, once again, just very disappointing. Um, although, like I said in my previous episode, I think it's more of me overperforming rather than Norris underperforming.
for me. Because like I said, the car is the third quickest or even fourth quickest behind the Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes. So we should really be in the sort of seventh to eighth kind of position. So I think I'm just over overperforming, but what a result. My goodness. Let's get into race day. And uh, once again, I'm going to target under what I'll probably end up getting. And I'm going to just target a podium again. Let's go. And here we go for the Emila Grand Prix, once called the San Marino Grand Prix. And we are ready. I'm prepared for a good race. Now, I think what I'm actually going to do is uh, lower my uh, aerodynamics again, because obviously I upped it during qualifying. But because I have track position and I don't want to be too vulnerable down the straights, I might just lower it again. I think that's not a bad idea. Let's do that. Strategy is going to be a medium to hard stint. That's fine with me. Lower the downforce back down. And we are ready for round three of the Ayrton Senna driver career mode. Let's go. Right, now it's a bit annoying that I have to start on a corner, which is a bit annoying. But we'll have to deal with that. The lights go off and we are away. It's not a bad start. Get right up to the grass. The two Red Bulls are scrapping with each other. And I think I will remain in P1... Yes, I will. Throughout turns one, two, and three. Lovely, lovely stuff. Everyone around me on medium tires. And now, I'm not going to use my ERS until I get to the straights. Because they can't overtake me through the corners. So, perfect start. Perfect situation. Let's go. Alright, here we are at the end of lap one. Max Verstappen right behind me. But I'm going to cross the line still in P1. Now, do I have the straight line speed to keep him back? Yes, I do. Lovely, lovely stuff. I am going to have to start managing my ERS, though. I mean, if I have to use up to 60% a lap just to stay ahead, I'm going to have to charge it up a lot. But like I said, they can't overtake me through the corners. There's not enough room. So, I can just turn my ERS off here. Go round. On exit. Turn it back on. Lovely. Honestly, for the first time I think ever of me playing this game, my tyres actually have equal wear. There's usually one tyre that's got way more wear than the others. But look, they're all quite equal apart from the front right now. But still, you get the point. That's always nice. Right, now DRS is enabled. The fastest lap is going all the way down the field. Here comes Verstappen. Do I have the means to hold him off? I think I do. And I do indeed. Lovely stuff. But like I said... I'm having to use up to 50% ERS just to defend. Oh, I've gone wide. That was an opportunity for Verstappen, but he's also made the same error somehow. Great. Right, DRS is enabled once again. Will Verstappen go for a move is the question. I've got, like, no ERS to use. The recharge is really, really slow. Is he going to go for it? He goes to the inside, and I can't really do anything about it. We are going to fight, but... Yeah, he's just gone and big skid as well. That doesn't help. Right, so that's Verstappen gone on lap four of this race. And now I've got to try and hold back Sergio Perez. Now, what I'm still hoping is that I could stick with Verstappen. I don't really want to overtake him. Just stick with him to get the DRS and just sort of pull me along. That's sort of the target here. So, at the final corner, seven tenth gap. I do have DRS. So does Checo, though. Uh-oh. Oh, yes. That straight line speed is gorgeous. But here comes Perez. Is he going to go for it? No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Okay, so I do hold on to P2 at the end of lap 4 to start lap 5. Tyres are okay. The front right's getting a bit weak. But it's definitely still very, very, like, you know, good. We're not really near that sort of driving on ice part yet. Although we are getting there. The only thing that's saving me right now is that chicane I just went past with the big bumps. I'm really, really strong through there compared to the AI. And that's allowing me to stay within that DRS range of a stab. And that is key. That's big. So DRS gets enabled again. Now Perez is faster in a straight line. Has he got enough to go for a move though? I don't think he does. Here comes Verstappen. Can I even... Hang on, I'm around the outside. This is very brave. This is very stupid, but very brave. Verstappen goes off. Round the outside on the curb. Verstappen on the inside. And I'm just going to have to let him go. It's not worth a risk trying to fight through there. You can barely fit one car through there, let alone two. Honestly, I've got 50% ERS charge. 
I don't even think I need it. To the outside of the stab, and he's going to block me a little bit. Checo Perez is also in the mixture. I've got to give him space. That went horribly wrong. I thought I was just going to drive around the outside of the stab and get that move done. But he sort of blocked me off. I was forced to go on the grass. Maybe I could have gone on the left, but uh, that's a bit annoying. What I was going to say is I've got, you know, a lot of VRS to use. I can get this move done really easy, but ew, that's complicated things. Don't worry, there's always next lap. Alright, here we go for part two. Let's get past this Dutch prick. Come on! Oh yes! Only had to use 30% of my ERS. And I'm through back into P1. Come on. Good thing about that move as well, it didn't use um, too much of my, uh, it didn't take up too much lap time because I just drove round him. Fastest sector one as well because of that DRS assistance. Tires are becoming a bit mid now, I'll be honest. The front right is really starting to struggle. I haven't hit the magical 25 yet though. So we should be okay for when I actually have to stop, which is in two laps time. Uh, the only thing I'm now concerned about is this guy. Um, I can actually start hearing Super Max playing through my ears now. Here he comes. Although he doesn't seem to feel like going for an overtake for some reason. There he goes. He's going for it. To the outside. Cut him off a little bit. Not too bad. Whoa. Oh, we have a mid-race goal. Charged ERS to 64%. I hate that a lot. Why is that a thing? Oh, no. I've gone on the grass. Oh, I've been on the grass. This ain't rallying, is it? Absolute knobhead. How is my ERS going down? Oh, because I'm, oh, I'm switching between hot lap. That's why. What an idiot. Oh, it's all going horribly wrong for me. Right, I'm probably finished through here. I can't use my ERS because the game like, won't allow me to. He is going to go for a move. I'm going to use a little bit of it, not a lot. Even if a stabber gets past, I can't allow Checo through as well. He is going to go for it. I'm going to break a little bit later than usual just to cover him off. Okay, so we're in... P2 again, uh, we are stopping this lap, uh, which is a bit annoying, I would like to stay ahead, but that's okay, we'll have to live with that, we are up to 50% uh, ERS on the charge up thing, let's keep that going up, there we go, 62, I should be able to get it here quite easily, bosh, there it is, okay, now, I could deploy a bit more of it, lovely stuff, okay, Let's just hope Verstappen doesn't pit as well. Um, I'm hoping that Perez is the one who pits first, not Verstappen. Let's find out. What's it going to be? Ah, oh, you... Ah, oh, that's so annoying. Okay, so Verstappen's going to pit. Perez stays out. And uh, we go from there. So, into the pits, we must go e i e i e i o. Let's hope for a good stop. I ain't going to come out ahead of Verstappen, but a good stop would still be nice. A two point... Uh oh. Oh. Oh, okay, never mind. I've come out way ahead of a stab, but it's crazy how that works, really, isn't it? Wow, was not expecting that at all. I came in a second behind, I've come out a second in front. Great. Alright. I need to stop trying to predict things. It doesn't ever go well, does it? So we're actually back out with a very sizable lead over the Stappen, despite being behind him. Okay, you know what? We absolutely take that. And now we just need a positive outlap. Uh, so we can get a good undercut on the likes of Perez just to extend the lead over them Of course, we were already ahead of Perez before we stopped. Uh, it's just to get a nice little cushion nice little lead So me and Verstappen can have a proper fight just me and him and Alonso as well Wait, where did Alonso get there? Huh? All right, so Lando Norris has officially stopped. Oh, that's gone a bit wrong. Don't worry. We'll come back on track So let's see where Lando comes out. I don't even know where he was beforehand um, I assume in that sort of P8, P9 region. So my gap to Verstappen is actually extended on this first out lap. We can see Sergio Perez exiting the pits up here. I am going to come out ahead, but honestly, it's not as big of an advantage as I thought. So that's going to be Perez coming out on fresh hards as well. The entire uh, racetrack is now full of hard tyres. I think every, I think all 20 drivers are on hards at this stage. And actually, I believe Verstappen and Perez were scrapping because I've gained, like, a, a second out of nowhere. Okay, that's interesting. 
Lalo Norris currently, I believe he is actually outside of the points right now, uh, fighting with some stakes. So, Lalo Norris once again having a bit of a stinker. I mean, even if I, even if he could just score points, would be okay. But he seems to be struggling to do that at the moment. Both Red Bulls are now just behind. The gap has gone down by about half a tenth. Now, will Perez go for a move on his teammate Verstappen? That would be a proper blockbuster. He's gone for it, and I think he's got it done way before the straight ends. That's impressive stuff by Checo. Well done, mate. Good for you. I'm happy about that. We like Checo a lot on this YouTube channel, so, you know, him being in P2 now, that's quality stuff. Verstappen has retaken second place of his teammate, and I'm sort of hoping that those two keep scrapping until the end of this race. Because I'm feeling very comfortable out front right now, and, you know, the gap isn't really going down at all. It's actually going up a little bit. So if it just stays like that, I'll be a very happy person. Once again, second and third switch round, Perez now up to P2. Um, and I think it might just keep doing that until the end of this race. Um, you only need about a four-tenth gap or half a second gap to the car ahead to get the move done. And they're always that. So I think literally until the end, Perez and Verstappen will keep switching. We also have a new race objective, which is to get a lap time of a 1 minute 18.6. That ain't awful i think that's very doable i think yeah that should be yeah, that should be easy right over the line is it going to be a one minute 18 oh easily bosh 16 7 almost two seconds quicker than what they targeted okay so that's two objectives done verstappen once again makes the move up to p2 and then next lap perez will go up to p2 probably nice one but I'm feeling very comfortable. Uh, the tyre wear isn't awful. Uh, he is getting a bit squirrely. A bit oversteery, but overall, it's very good. Right, let's see if the Red Bulls will switch once again. Here they go. Ready, and boom. There it is. Perez, back ahead of Verstappen. Down the main straight. Um, and, I mean, they are catching quite quickly, which is getting a bit concerning. Um... The gap was about 3 seconds, it's now only 2.2. And there is still about 6 laps left. This is going to be close. Luckily though, I've saved a lot of VRS over these laps, so if they do get close enough for DRS, I should be able to defend. And we'll go from there. Right, so I've come to the conclusion it is actually Sector 1 where I'm losing all my time. I have just lost about 6 temps in Sector 1 alone. Through Sector 2 and 3 though, I am equal, if not a little bit faster, as you can see, another 10th gain there. Now, through this chicane, I should be able to gain quite a lot more, maybe another 10th or two. Uh, my exit's quite poor, though, so maybe not as much of an impact, but you can still see. Another 10th or so. Just got to keep knocking those laps. Alright, we are in the final three laps of this race. The gap has actually increased from 1.6 to 1.8. As per usual, the Red Bulls are going to switch round, and, um... Actually, thinking about it, doesn't that mean Perez will win? Because Perez will overtake on... La no! Verstappen should get second in the, or, well, win this battle between the Bulls. Next lap, Perez will get past Verstappen. Actually, to be fair, I'm saying that they could very well both get past me. I, I'm not really considering that, to be fair. And the gap is only 1.2. I realise it is that area, turn 7, where I'm losing a lot of my lap time. I think it's more so the exit. Uh, when the Sapper was in front of me a few laps ago, uh, the start of this race, he was really quick through turn 7. I think that's where I'm losing the most time. But I'd say, even if I have to use all my ERS, the most important thing is keeping above that one second gap. That's it. That's all I really care about. Even if it's 1.001. If it's above a second, I'm fine. And even though the pressure is building, I still feel relatively chillaxed. Um, good. Right, penultimate lap of the race, it's time to use a bit more ERS, not a whole lot, just a little bit. Once again, the Red Bulls are probably going to switch places. It's a shame, there they go. They, uh, oh, hang on. Wait, Perez might have not got it done there. Whoa, big skid. That's bad, that's bad, that's bad. For the first time in about 10 laps, the Red Bulls haven't switched places and have actually gained a little bit of time because of it. What a time to be alive. Excellent news. 
Yes, the gap is at 1.6. That is so, so huge. That is actually bigger than um, West Ham United. Wait, so that means there's a very real chance that Perez could actually come out on top in this battle of the balls. And don't, don't forget, Alonso and Russell are right there. If something goes wrong between these Red Bulls, like, Russell and Alonso, they're right there to, like, pick up the pieces. Anyway, round the final corner to begin the final lap of this Imola Grand Prix. This uh, hard stint has been so, so strong. The consistency has been really on point. And let's see. Can Perez go for a move on his teammate? I don't think he can. Since they both have ERS on, I think Verstappen just has, you know, not as much of a deficit in straight line speed. And no, Verstappen hands on. But more so focused on me. The gap is 1.2. Around turn 7 where I've been really weak this entire race. Not bad. ERS back on. And honestly, I'm just going to turn hot lap on and hope that gets me to the end. Fuel's good. ERS is good. The gap is just getting to under a second, but it doesn't really mean anything. There's no DRS left. 1.2 now. Into the final sector on the final lap of this race. And what a result this is. Or this would be. I had so much doubt about this weekend. Imola being one of my weakest tracks on the calendar. Playing on 109 difficulty, the highest I've ever done, around the final corner. And is that not just one of the best things I have ever done in this game, or any F1 game? My goodness, the consistency that I showed on that hard stint will go down in the Hall of Fame. That was so good. That was like Verstappen in Mexico 23 or 22, when every single lap was like a 1 minute 22 2 or something. That was an immaculate race. What a time to be alive. Come on. And so the across the line results is as follows. Me, Ayrton Senna converts a immaculate pole position to a spectacular race win. Max Verstappen converts a P2 to a P2 and Sergio Perez a P3 to a P3. Fernando Alonso goes from P8 to P4. Very good race by him. George Russell, you know, bog standard, qualified P5, finished P5. Um, and also Alex Albon, scoring points in the Williams, a P8 for him. Also Lewis Hamilton, 10 places from P19 to P9. But once again, a horrible day and a horrible weekend all round for Lando Norris. He started P7, I believe his highest qualifying position all season, and only manages a P12. What is going wrong with Lando? We don't know. So after that race, the driver's standings are as follows. Ayrton Senna, a.k.a. me, leads the championship by 17 points over Max Verstappen on uh, 66. Uh, I have 66. Verstappen has 49. George Russell on 36. And Fernando Alonso on 34. Still very, very close, though. I mean, and I, all the way down to P7. Perez has one good result. He's all the way up to P3 or P2. Lando Norris with one singular point. And a 65 gap deficit to me. Not good for him. It's the Constructors. We are P2. Seven points away. Remember, 66 to the 67 points are all from me. Ferrari are 16 points away. And Aston Martin are 22. Still very, very close. Of course, we are only three races in. So it's going to be close. But, you know, only seven points between the top two. Drivers are still pretty close as well. It's all to play for. But what a time to be alive. What a race. I enjoyed that a ton. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe and all the usual stuff. I'll try not to speak so fast next episode. I've had a cup of coffee. What do you expect? But yeah, that's all from me. See you later. Ta-ta.